Okay, as we will be talking about the daily life of medieval women, there is a time frame, almost 1,000 years roughly, for it begins in the fall of Rome, the sack of Rome, and it ends to roughly about 450 to 1500. So it is, there's a many debate about upon when it ended, but most historians tend agree roughly around 1500. And so we will discuss the women's roles in the Middle Ages, which discuss the class. And there are three classes in the Middle Ages. There's the women in towns. There is the peasant class. There is the women in towns, which is sort of middle class. And then there is the noble women. So we are going to discuss these three classes. And I'm not going to discuss women in nunnery, even though, you know, that'll be for next week. This is just regular women outside of the monastery. Okay, so let's get started. All right, the peasant class, I decided to discuss it in life stages from infancy to adolescence and adulthood because there's many details about their daily life. Okay, so mothers, they often breastfed their children for one to two years, so when they're born, and sometimes it is very hard for them to survive childbirth, but, and it's likely like usually one out of five will survive, and so it is a very big statistic, so it's an unlikely factor for them to live. Peasants, however, could not afford a nurse, but the baby's mother died and the nurse would take her place. And babies, they were often swaddled and kept in cradles and um, swaddling means a white linen cloth hanging over their heads and they would wrap up like a mummy except for their face and a lot of times they would die or get in fires. However, because uh, mothers didn't work a lot, they would always have their younger children, like five-year-old, six-year-old, or even a three-year-old, to watch their baby. And because of the, how young they are, they would die. They would cause a fire or die. Working mothers and fathers, they would um, have their babies everywhere. For instance, there's a picture of a woman plowing and they would carry their baby on their back while they are plowing. And so babies also had a high mortality rate due to diseases. However, most babies died from carelessness because of neglect of their older siblings who couldn't take care of them. And it resulted in deaths like babies dying in a cradle. And so there's a lot of tragedies in infancy. And this is a picture right here of children playing with toys, peasant children playing with toys and catching butterflies. And if you can see it's in an ancient medieval manuscript. Okay, childhood. So childhood Remember, medieval women, children, you know, you're an adult for a medieval kid at seven years old. You're already considered an adult. And um, so childhood is pretty young. Childhood ends when children's permanent teeth come in. So once you get your permanent teeth in, you're an adult. So it is really a slim, slim time of becoming a child. And peasants, children, they often spent their childhood with their peasant parents, of course, working. They were expected to work at an early age, not only on their parents' farm, but as a peasant, you had to go and work in your lord's manor. Whoever owns your land, you had to work for him, and they had to become, they had to work in their garden, their land, outside doing agricultural work. And before they were 12, children were working for wages. So they made money at 12 years old, but before then, they already officially was 12 years old, but before then, they 
could make wages. And in most regions, they usually guarded sheep, cattle, or geese, and those were very easy tasks for children because they didn't require them a lot of manual labor. And when not working, the children liked to sing, dance, and play. And play was an important aspect of a child's life, and they liked to recreate events. And young girls, they were giving ragged dolls to play with, and some of these were made from materials available at home like spare rags, fabric, or wood. So they like to play with dolls. This is a poor picture of a woman in a garden. She, they're harvesting right here in this picture. Marriage. So what was marriage like for a peasant woman? Well, marriages, they were often arranged by their family. So it was arranged by their families too, even though they were peasant class. They didn't have much freedom. They had, it was between who was better match for the, each other. They had to marry within their own class. Girls were married young, so the earliest age is around 12. And this is very different from the Renaissance era because at the time, the peasant class, they could marry for love. Here in the Middle Ages, they had their parents choose who they had to marry. So there wasn't much freedom in the class. And the bride was also given a dowry for peasant, peasant classes. They also had to have a dowry too. It wasn't much, but it was still enough of a dowry for, to provide for the bride. And the husband, they ruled the household and property, so they were regarded as property. Men could divorce their wives, but their women could not. And it is very rare for a woman to divorce a man. There was one case that a woman did, but it was a noble woman. And women were expected to give birth to a large number of sons, and this was to help with the home and agriculture, the farming, and also farming, you know, not only their parents' land, but also the, their lord's land. And the risk of childbirth was high, that it often result in death. And there was, a lot of them resulted in death because, you know, there was lack of medicine training and the equipment wasn't sterile. And they were in charge, women were also in charge of children and they had to provide basic medical knowledge to care for them and pass down to their own kids. So women, they had to know a lot of medical herbs like doctors so they could use this knowledge and pass it on to their own children. So what was the daily life of a regular woman like? Well, many of them worked as agricultural laborers or servant girls in a Lord's manner. And women, they would rise early, and it was often at 3 a.m., and they would work till sunrise. And they would do their ho household chores before they went out to work. They had a cook clean for their husband. They would cook clean, draw water, and bring it home and stoke the hers cook breakfast by weed at the nearest meal and make cheese tend to small animals or work in the vegetable plot in their house. And all that is before they go to their jobs. So they have to do all that before they go to their jobs. That's why they get up at 3 a.m. because they have to do the household chores before they go out and do their real jobs. And then after they do that, then they go to their jobs. And women worked in the fields. They would weed, hoe, and sow pulses. And some of them also had to harvest the crops and go to the markets to sell them in the marketplaces. And in English villages, the men would guide the plow while the women spurned the animals with their goat and guided them. So they did a lot of manual labor. However, um, women's wages, they were lower than the men, so the men got paid more than the woman. 
and women they sold um, surplus agricultural produce in markets and fairs so they made whatever they made they had to give to their husbands and thus because women made lesser than the men many estates with fields would employ a woman rather than a man because it was cheap labor so because so lords they would hire a woman to do the work because it was cheaper because they didn't have to pay them much which is sort of like today's where we pay high school students rather than someone qualified for cheap to labor and so the women they would do the tend to the animals and do the sifting and the winnowing so they would do the men's jobs because they get they were cheap and women who worked as servants would work for rich families or become maid servants. Okay, so what was female peasant clothing like? And this is an example of a female, of a peasant's clothing right here. Because the peasants were poor, many peasant women, they only had one set of clothing and they could hardly ever wash it, so it's, it stunk. And however, men, women made their own cl clothes. They mostly wore long dresses and made of wool, stockings of wool, so they mostly wore wool clothing. And again, they never washed their clothes because they couldn't afford to or and didn't have the time to wash their clothes. And women, they wore clogs made of thick leather. That was their shoes that they would work with. In winter, women wore cloaks made of wool, and they also like to wear wool hats and linens. And I'm going to show you a video of medieval walking because people in the Middle Ages did not walk as we do now. You know, we walk heel, toe, but in the Middle Ages, walking was entirely different. They would walk toe, heel first. The reason why is because of the way they made their shoes, leather shoes, and also because of the pavement back then. And it would hurt your feet back then if you walked heel to toe, whereas walking toe to heel, you were more balanced and it would be better for their health back then. And also because if you um, see something, a bee, over there and you know they will know what they are walking on because if you see a bee you will step over it with your toe rather than your, your heel so that is one of the reasons why they walked toe to heel because they were more careful where they were going and how they walked and also the way we changed their feet. It isn't until we walk heel to toe until the Renaissance and that is because we get more rigid shoes. Okay, so let's move on to the next class. Women in towns. So this is the middle class people because they could afford living in towns. And they were also merchant class too. The poorer girls in urban towns would not be educated. However, you know, there's a poor class and the poor middle class and the upper middle class. We're talking about both classes, uh, middle classes. Okay, the townswomen in the middle class were expected to read and write in the vernacular language. In some cases, daughters of merchants and guilds would be sent to school for <coughs> apprenticeship, and they would learn their trade of their fathers. They were elementary schools where boys and girls studied together. The girls were in school from 7 to 12 years old. And some girls were sent to the nunnery schools to learn but they didn't enter to become a nun yet. This was because the nunnery schools were more educated and gave them, they could read and write in the Middle Ages. So they didn't take the veil 
Both elementary and nunnery schools taught not only reading and vernacular, but also religion, prayers, and etiquette. So, young kids also went to school in the Middle Ages for middle class. And, however, there were some girls who chose to stay at home and get a tutor. And this is a picture of a woman teaching ge geometry to her students. So what were marriages like in their towns? Well, it was also determined by their families. Because, like I said, they can't marry for love in the peasant or middle classes until the Renaissance. So everything was all arranged by their families. And they also had to have a dowry. And the dowry, they helped the groom purchase first goods and then qualify for entry into the merchant guilds. And thus, rich peop townspeople waited for the most suitable match for their daughters. They would have a contest to see who's most suitable. Because um, their husband can enter the guild for a merchant. Wives also brought their husbands more dowries. And in order for them to be considered a citizen, a person had to be a property owner. Thus, young women who had land, they transferred their citizenship to their husbands who had none. So this was very, if you didn't have any money as a young man, you can marry a woman and with land and he would become a citizen. And daughters and guilds, they also transfer the right of guild membership to their husbands if they were in the same trade. However, women were expected to have large families and of course infant mortality rate was high. And women, they had to raise their own children and breastfeed them. However, the upper middle class would have servants to help them. And this is a medieval picture of a woman giving birth. Okay, so what were town's women like in the middle class and upper middle class? Well, the women, they would do household chores. Some women were expected to help their husbands with trade, like carpenters, goldsmiths, and tailors. And they can even make their own jewelry and sell it in market in towns. So they could enter a trade and be selling it in the marketplace. However, most of the women were prominent in the textile industry. They washed, dyed, and spun wool and flax. Another occupation for women in the middle class was midwifery, which was one of the lower, which was a lower class than the merchants. And another thing that they would like to do as a job was bookbinding and illuminating, which was another craft for women. And as you can see, this is what illuminating is. You know, painting pictures and books and their manuscripts. All this is illuminating. See, because this right here is part of a P. And on the other side, the real page would be the text. So this is what book binding and illuminating is. They would have pictures, drawing pictures within the text and in the text of uh, manuscripts. Okay, and this is lower middle class. Women in the low, poorer classes, they could become retailers. They made products and sold them. And some items included fish, chicken, and dairy. And did you know women also brew beer? Yeah, they brew beer and they would sell it. And brewing, it gave many opportunities for married women, for they would brew ale and sell it, and eventually However, in the later Middle Ages, women me me brewers declined because it became dominated by men. And so the men took up the profession. It was once a women's profession, and the men took it up, and they, women had to move on to an another drink. So brewery was once by women. And they also became wet nurses, servants, and healers. That's another occupation. And these occupations were simple. They required very for little formal training. 
And these women learned these skills informally through their family, so it was a trade by their parents and the parents before them. So it was a trade passed down to families. Okay, so what did women in the middle class and towns, what did they like to do? Well, they loved participating in games. One example is a padua, which is a spring courtship ritual. And young girls, they would gather in a cardboard or wood fortress, and the young boys would besiege them by throwing flowers. And so that was one of their pastimes, <laughs> it was a courtship. And women, they also liked to attend theater and tournaments, and they also had public baths to keep them clean. Rich townswomen wore clothes of fine linings and high quality wool. They would have it made or have it tailored and would also make it. The middle class women would make their own clothes based on, upon their occupation, so your clothes were defined by your occupation. And they were sturdy and durable and it was suited for their work. And this is an example of a game, a play that they would have in the Middle Ages. So now we're going to talk about the noble women. And an average noble woman's family, they at least had four to six children. And you would think that noble women would be much more leisure, right? They would wear beautiful clothes and just sit around and play chess all day. But there's more to noble women than you think. All right, so infant mortality was high. In England, at least 29% of female babies died. So that's how many died in the noble women class. Babies, they were often betrothed while they were still in their cradle. So while you are young, a baby in your cradle, your parents are already discussing your marriage, who you will marry. And babies, they were often given rattles to suck on. And they also played with other toys that they would play with when they're older were based on their gender. So if you're a toddler, an infant, and you're a girl, you would basically receive gender-like toys like pots and pans and dolls made of wood, linen, and wool. And this was to teach you how to become a good housewife. And then girls, they were sent to courts of lords to study good manners and conduct. So that you were often sent to other lords to study. And some girls who were meant for the nunnery were sent to nunneries to be educated. And girls who were betrothed were sent to live and be educated in the family of their intended groom. And so this helped the girl transition quickly into adulthood. So if you're a little infant and you're engaged already, remember they're already discussing your marriage in the cradle. But as soon as you're old enough to walk, they will, for instance, you're in a cradle and they said, and your parents say, oh, Johnny would be a good match. So as soon as you're old enough to walk, it's like, let's move him into Johnny's house and his household. And they would grow up with their intended groom. And then as soon as they're as of age, that girl would marry Johnny and become a noble woman. So they determine your birth as a middle age. <laughs> So yeah, you were sent to live with your intended bridegroom at a young age. <laughs> All right. Okay. Canon law stated that the minimum age of girls marrying was 12 years old. However, they did not follow that law. For numerous young girls were married off while still minors. One example was a girl married at seven years old. And that was an average time for them to marry was about seven. And women who were destined for the church were sent to nunneries. Brides of Christ were also given a dowry. 
Men couldn't know their marriages based on the grounds that they were forced to marry or for adultery. So if a woman committed adultery, he can divorce her. And if he says that, oh, I was forced to marry her, that could also be annulled too. However, it was rare for a noble woman to annul her marriage. And again, one noble woman did annul her marriage, which was rare, but she really didn't have a good reputation after that and was shunned by her family. Okay, noble families took greater care in registering their son's births than their daughters. This was because they didn't believe daughters were good enough or more important as their sons. And women, they did not suckle their children, but it left them in the care for their wet nurses. And because of they never raised their own child but left them in the care of someone else. They did not develop any emotional ties with their children. And this was due to the social structure and the educational system. So, yeah, noble women didn't get along with their daughters. As you can tell in the peasant and the middle class, they were the ones raising them. But not in the middle class, they didn't have any emotional ties. Okay, because many noble women, medieval noblemen ha were absent, were frequently absent from their home, their wives would fulfill most of their tasks. So the women, they would run the estate. They would manage household affairs, run the fief, and supervise the peasants. And this was also a dangerous time for women because if there is a foreign invader out there, invaders come into your estate and your husband's gone, you have to take up the sword, be a general, and protect your own estate from the, gen from the invaders. So women, they would always, they have to assume the general their husband's position also when it comes to war. So women, they had to protect the estate against invaders and fight in battle if your husband's away. And women would also lease land, collect rents, receive bailiff reports. They would also send surplus crops to market and maintain buildings. And women also supervised servants, so they had a lot to do in the household. And one of the common things about their husbands is that sometimes they led a very lonely life when their husband was away because their husbands were gone for a long time. And this was because the noblemen would go to the court and serve the king, which left them alone. So they often suffer bouts of loneliness and depression. So they had to find ways to keep themselves occupied while they're lonely. And for fun, this is what women did. They went horseback riding. They used falconry and played chess, backgammon, sang, danced, embroidered, and recited poetry and read. They loved reading chivalrous romances. <laughs> like women do today, how we like reading romance novels. They like reading romance novels back then. Okay, they also like to attend tournaments and they loved hosting whenever the queen comes to their estate because it was a very festive occasion. And noble women, you know, when they, they also visited loved it when noble women because sometimes they would also join in with the queen in their processions and so they loved it when they come to their estate and hold processions for it was a very festive okay occasions so this is a picture of a medieval woman playing chess okay so what did the women like to wear well women they because they're noble they always took great care in their appearance. They wore clothes of silk and damask and velvet and they were bright colors, very bright colors like blue and red. Women also wore headdresses shaped like hearts and butterflies so they would wear 
hat pointy hats right there and some of them were shaped like butterflies and hearts and women they wore fur undergarments in winter to keep them warm they also loved to wear jewelry and some of the jewels they like were gemstones and because their rooms were icy in winter women did not bathe so they didn't bathe in the winter time and they only bathed in the rivers in summer so they only bathed in the summertime however women did wash their face and hands every morning so even though you didn't take a bath you would still wash your hands and face okay and um, last but not least you can't go into the middle ages without talking about the witches <laughs> because um, let's face it the middle ages were very superstitious back then like they were very they believed in witches and witchcraft and spells they were suspicious <laughs> in the middle ages people believed that good magic and bad magic existed through the means of a magician so they believed in magician and that there was good and bad magic throughout the universe they expected to have an immediate result from their spell so they would always go to a magician for a spell and witches at the time were seen as the devil's accomplices and women actually engaged in witchcraft so they actually did do witchcraft and they practiced healing elixirs love potions and curses and this was of course to make money and others there were often trials of witchcraft trials however others were that were accused of witchcraft were innocent so there were some guilty and some not so there were a lot of witchcraft trials because witchcraft was seen as a sign of heresy because you know they only believed that God has the power of magic you know and, and miracles it was you know up to the accused to prove his or her innocence so this is a trial of how you can tell you were a witch the witchcraft would prove amnesty if the accused confessed if not they would ask questions about demono demonological literature after torture so they would torture you first and then ask questions about demonic literature and however if you confessed before after you were tortured you were given amnesty but if not you would be you would be seen as a heretic and burnt alive by 1300s to 1500s two-thirds of people accused were witchcraft were impoverished women so you can tell there's a bias against poor women there and the accusers of witchcraft were often women so it was women accusing other women of witchcraft often poor women so and this is a picture of them torturing and burning witches so that is their trial they would often torture them first and then they will burn them and of course some were innocent some were not and then this is my references of here